Hello everybody, welcome to area study two of unit four biology. Today we are going to be looking at changes in species over time. We're going to be looking at fossils and the fossil record and we are also going to be looking at speciation in terms of allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation. So a fossil is basically a remain or impression that has been preserved. So it might be things like bones, teeth, shells, eggs, footprints, anything like that. And they're usually formed underwater when they've been really, really quickly buried um, under sediment and in time with lots of pressure left undisturbed, they will then form. There's a few different types of fossils. Um, a mineralized fossil is something that would turn into rock. A mold is basically when a bone might decompose but leave a space where the bone once was. And so it's kind of left a bit of an impression. Um, a cast is where volcanic rock uh, fills up that mold. In terms of conditions for fossilization to occur, there needs to be rapid burial. Okay, so as soon as a death of the animal has occurred, it needs to be rapidly covered in sediment. Um, and this will accumulate layers over time. Okay, so that will give it a bit of pressure um, as well. And a, an environment that would be alkaline or oxygen free, oxygen depleted. Um, so something like the mud at the bottom of a stagnant pool or a still body of water is prime for fossil development. Um, and it's where the occurrence of death may be in a very cold environment. So these could be preserved by freezing as well. Basically, over time, lots of pressure. Um, it might then be dug up and the fossil may be there as well. In terms of determining the age of a fossil, there are two major ways that we do this. We can organize and figure out the relative age or the absolute age. Relative age is basically thinking about the layers of sediment that are already there and sort of comparing what we already know. So if we know fossils and we know their age, comparing the unknown fossil to the known fossils as well. And we can use that as what we call an index fossil. And so when we look at the layers, the oldest sediment would be well, well, well below, and the newer, um, more recent sediments will be closer to the top. In terms of absolute or radiometric dating, this uses naturally occurring radioactive isotopes. We're trying to figure out the half-life um, that may exist, and from there we can figure out the age of that particular fossil. In terms of speciation, speciation is basically the process in which populations diverge until they become a distinct species. So for an organism to be recognized as a new species itself, it needs to be able to produce what we call viable and fertile offspring. Okay, um, The two types of speciation that we look at are allopatric and sympatric. So Allopatric speciation is basically where there is a geographic separation of the population from the parent population and that will result in a new species. So if we look here, we've basically got the original population and it's had some sort of geographic barrier. Okay, There are now two components of this population reproductively isolated for one another. They do not interact. There might be mutations that arise in certain populations. There's different selection pressures that those um, may undergo as well. But over time, even if we remove that barrier, if we reintroduce those two populations to each other, they will not be able to produce um, viable and fertile offspring if they are new species. So viable means that those offspring will be able to live and fertile meaning that those offspring will be able to create offspring of their own. And so if that occurs, then that has undergone allopatric speciation. Okay. When we talk about sympatric speciation, we look at a subset of a population forming a new species, but this is without geographic separation. So in terms of sympatric speciation, there is no geographical barrier involved. So if we look over here, we can see that they're still in the same location, but there's been no barrier to cause that. So there has been a speciation event, 
um, where they do become two distinct species, but there was no barrier sort of affecting that. Individuals are then considered different species if they can't breed with each other to produce viable and fertile offspring. Um, and we can also compare their DNA to see if there's any similarities or differences um, and compare their structural features as well. The main examples that you guys will look at when it comes to allopatric speciation is Galapagos finches on the Galapagos Islands um, and looking at their beak structure. And then looking at sympatric speciation, the divergence of the Howleo palm species is what you'll be looking at on Lord Howe Island um, as your form of example for sympatric speciation. If you have any questions regarding fossilization process, what a fossil is, or the two types of speciation that we've looked at because we are identifying changes in species over time, please leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to it as soon as I can. Thank you. Bye.